I was just over here grabbing my wheels for my kayak and then I noticed her down there. So it looks like I'm gonna have her and a dozen little chicks running around pretty soon. If you watched my last video, you saw I ended up getting a ton of water in my kayak uh, to the point where I was making it almost unstable. So today we're going to go through the process of how you can find and diagnose where these leaks are coming from by doing a sort of pressure testing of the kayak. And how we're going to do that is just by using water out of a water hose, some liquid dish detergent, and some wheels or something that can lift the kayak in the middle to give it a pivot point. There are a lot of basic areas you can visually inspect, such as the uh, keel on the bow and the stern. Those get rubbed through from getting dragged. Areas like the hatch can lose their seals. Scupper holes are weak points on kayaks, especially the older ones when the uh, plastic starts getting brittle. This is one that I've already repaired, so I want to double check that but pretty much all these scupper holes can be weak points, especially if you're using the through hole uh, uh, wheels. Anywhere that you've drilled holes, like these rod holder mounts, handles, and then especially like where you've added it, the factory ones tend to be pretty secure, but where if you've put your own uh, equipment through, where you've drilled through the uh, housing, those are good points you checked making sure your plug is in good condition and it's actually there as well as these rudder holes for the rudder lines i don't have a rudder but those uh should be plugged off uh this hatch i installed so that can be an issue so a lot of areas that you can visually inspect but makes it very difficult to see if there's actually a crack or not because water can flow through a pinhole so basically I've got the kayak on tilt. Um, I'm just placing a little bucket inside there that I'm gonna squirt the uh, liquid dish washing liquid into. And then I've got the hose that I'm just gonna foam it up. And then that water is gonna go to the back half of the kayak and then I'll be able to check uh, those uh, back parts for any leaks. And we just fill it up. And shoot the chicken. Now this will only work if you use a coconut to lift the back end so you could check for leaks as it's dripping. And we seem to have found a problem. Right there on the bottom middle of the kayak. So I think that's a big problem. You can see how easily it is to spot those problems, especially when you're using the soap. So I filled it up to the middle hatch, so that's pretty good. I know my top seals are fine. This one is fully submerged, so I know that's good. As well as all the risky spots in the back and we have no leakage, so I'm solid there. But this leak is definitely a problem. Now that we're pretty solid on the backside being okay, uh, now we could test the front, and all we have to do now is just to lift up the back end slowly, that'll shift all that water over that pivot point and then up to the front, and then we could check the front end. And we could take a look at the bottom and see there's no issue with the front side. So we're solid there. I think we found our culprit. Plus it's good to know my front hatch is solid as well. Good design. Seven year old kayak. Same with the repaired scupper I did. It still looks clean. So now we just gotta take the plug out, flip it back down, and drain out all this soapy water.
That is where our problems arise. Just that hole there, I had no idea where it came from. It looks like it's been poked with a ice pick, but it looks like whatever I hit gouged this out and then finally indented it and punctured it there. So just a little bit of plastic welding and we'll be back to ready to go. All right, here is our little pinhole that we need to fix there. So we're gonna just do a quick step-by-step, -step, quick patch and we'll be good to go. The equipment I use is pretty basic. Um, I'm gonna use a wire brush just to give it a quick clean. I've already washed it off earlier. Um, I've got a piece that I used to drill out. I think this was before the, one of the rod holders. So just some scrap material. Uh, I've got a little hand torch, uh, just to quick heat things. And then I've got this little iron that I'll use to uh, melt and kind of combine the plastic so that they uh, basically become one. That's really all there is to it. It's going to start off just giving it a good little scrape there. I'm not really concerned about this strip. It's just that hole there, which again, I have no idea. It looks like I ran over a nail or something, but just to clean it up just in case. When dealing with this plastic welding, it's actually fairly easy. Something like this little pinhole is like the easiest. The larger you go, the more plastic that you're having to heat up and then the more risk that gets involved. Now really the only risk that you have to worry about is overheating the base plastic. And what happens then is that it gets very, very soft and then it'll start compressing on you and, and basically the hole will get bigger, the plastic will be so um, hot that it'll basically implode on itself and you'll just see that it sumps in there. And unless you have access to push it back out there, it could be a big problem. So you just want to take your time and make sure that you don't overheat it. Okay, what you're looking for is just to get a um, kind of a glaze on the base material and then the secondary material you want to be almost not liquid but very very soft. But again when you start putting that very soft which is heated more than this, that heat is going to make this even softer so that's why you don't want to get to the point where it's already starting to compress. You want it to get it less than that so when you add this extra heat it's not going to concave on you. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually be heating both of these up at the same time. Just hitting it, hitting it. This is actually a little bit overkill. It's just a little bit faster. But you can see if you watch this, how fast it heats it up to where it's burning. But you'll also see that little bit of a shine to it. And that's, that's the point where you want to get that and stop. You don't really want to get more than that. But this piece I'm going to get to its almost mushy and liquid I don't want it on fire I just want it uh, soft you can see it's starting to fall into itself which is fine now we're gonna want to heat this aspect up but again not too much okay so it's starting to get a a little bit hazy there so we don't want to go more than that and then I'm going to start using the iron to mold these things together. Just start with a little bit and I'm going to keep just dabbing it on there. And what we're trying to do is to get both pieces to melt together to form one piece there. And I don't want to hold this on there too long because you have that risk that this is going to get too hot and start sinking in on itself. You can see the heat ring you can see the heat ring right here, so that's the protected area that we want to watch out for. But you want it hot enough that it melds. And then I'm going to just beef it up with a little bit more plastic here. Quick touch it. Start spreading it around, get it thin, and then as well as heating up the base plastic. So that they're melting together. And 
And I'm going to call that good. You just definitely don't want to do too much. And then I've got my water. I'm just going to cool that guy down. Stop it from overcooking. Because you'll have to watch out is that while that's still hot, it could keep heating up and then that weight will cause it to start sinking. And you don't want that. So that part is still super hot. But I want to make sure that that process stops. We're basically done. Quick and easy. No more leaks. And you can sand it or whatever, but as you can see, I'll do my own sanding when I'm launching on the beaches and stuff. But that's how you fix it.